Hello everyone. Hope you all are fine and doing well. Stay happy, stay safe. I am here to discuss microbiology of air and soil. As we are very 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 familiar with the word microbiology. Micro stands for very small objects which are basically we are unable to see these microscopic objects with our naked eye. We use some device, some instrument, some apparatus to see these small objects. Here the word biology states that bio means living and logi means study. The study of living objects which are very small in size. The study of living objects which are very small in size. Then we will say that microbiology of soil. The branch of microbiology which deals with the study of soil microorganism. The microorganisms, the small living organisms present in the soil and their activities in the soil. Now what is meant by activities? Activities are basically those processes which microorganisms perform for growth like metabolism in which different components are made and different components are broken down and the result is the energy. So these activities are studied in the microorganism when they are present in soil. We use microbiology of soil to study these microorganisms, small, these small living creatures. Now these small living creatures may be bacteria, may be fungi, may be virus, anything which is present in the soil. It couldn't be virus because viruses cannot grow in soil. They require a living system to grow and soil is a non-living system. There is no other phenomena to grow viruses. It is possible if that virus is present inside the bacteria and that bacteria is present in the soil, then it is possible that, that the bacteria virus may grow. But in the soil, what virus cannot grow. Only bacteria and fungi can grow. They get their nutrients from that soil and reproduce and increase their number perform different metabolic activities to obtain their energy. Alright. Hence, now soil. The soil can be defined as the organic and inorganic materials on the surface of earth that provide medium for plant growth. Organic and inorganic material. Two types of materials, two types of matters, two types of substances. Organic substances having carbon and hydrogen in their chemical formula and inorganic substances. On the surface of earth that provide the medium, that provide any channel for the plant to grow. Right? Soil is that medium which is needed by the plant to grow. Then obviously soil will have all the required nutrition which is needed by the plant to grow. Then agriculturally, the soil is a region which support the plant life, which help the plant life by providing mechanical support and nutrients required for growth. Hence, the soil provide two type of thing, mechanical support and nutrition required for growth. These two are the basic needs which a plant require for its growth. It is a most biological interaction site. Among all other interaction sites, among all other sites which are needed for the plant, the soil is the major and main component where biological interactions takes place. Alright? Then, the other one is the components of soil. The components of soil means the admixtures of five major components including number one organic matter number two mineral matter number three soil air number four soil water and soil microorganisms 
we will discuss one by one all these sources and what are these sources why they are required why they are present in soil i repeat it organic matter minerals soil air soil water and soil micro organisms now number one is the mineral and organic matter it is derived from bedrocks through the decomposition this integration weathering process the basic three mechanisms by which minerals are obtained basically inorganic matters are obtained as we have discussed that soil contain two types of matters organic matter and inorganic matter and organic matter is something else we are here discussing about inorganic which is basically derived from obtained from decomposition means breakdown or decaying we can say then disintegration means to broke to break something and weathering seasonal changes what is weathering you can see here weathering is a mechanical or chemical process by which rocks are broken down into small pieces a mechanical or chemical process by which rocks are broken down into smaller pieces inorganic compounds includes silicon aluminum iron and others are carbon calcium potassium manganese then sodium sulfur phosphorus etc all these are the inorganic compounds present in the soil proportion of these mineral is very less than the total volume of the soil that means if the soil have total volume of 100 then we can say half of the portion is inorganic matter we can say if soil is for example 20 g then that 20 g means 100% volume among that 20 g 10 g will be inorganic matter and the other 10 g will be we will discuss other four objects which are present in soil all right half of the volume is the proportion of inorganic matter then the other point we have discussed about organic matter or organic components it is the organic residue of plant and animals added in the soil organic residue residue basically means um, left product means left product the product which is obtained at the end of any process so plants and animals add this residue in the soil organic matter is only provided by food for microorganism organic matter provide food for microorganisms but also provide energy why energy is needed energy is needed for metabolic processes of microbes we know about metabolism metabolism is performed by two ways either by catabolism or either by anabolism all these processes are also performed in microorganisms so we can say these processes obviously we need energy to perform these process and these processes are done in microorganisms by using these organic matter organic matter is a potential source for nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur for plant growth then microbial decomposition of organic matter releases the unavailable nutrients to the soil when decomposition of microorganisms takes place leading to the organic matter which release unavailable nutrients to the soil and these nutrients after decomposition are used by the soil for plant growth by increasing fertility of the soil all right proportion of organic matter is 3 to 6% of total volume of the soil we have said that half of the total volume of soil is inorganic matter and the other half contain 3 to 6% of organic matter all right we are left with 
almost we can say 47 or 40 we can say 6% 44% or 47% of total volume of soil remaining all right 50% is inorganic then other 3% or 6% that may be organic now what are the other 43% or 46% of the volume contain that volume contain soil water you can see here in the diagram you can understand by this diagram that this one is blue area shows water and this is black portion which shows the soil particles basically soil water is it comes from rain snow dew irrigation all these are the processes by which soil water comes microorganisms in soil requires water for their metabolic activities every living organisms needed water for their growth for their activities and here metabolic activities are performed by microorganisms and these microorganisms present in the soil use this water which is provided by rain snow dew and irrigation and microorganism use these use this soil water for metabolism it affect the plant growth by its effect on soil and microorganism percentage of soil water is 25 percent of total volume as i told you that the remaining that could be 47 percent or 43 percent then we can say 25 percent is the soil water then soil air now soil air soil air as the word described air means the presence of gases gases may be oxygen may be carbon dioxide and may be nitrogen we can say which is present in our atmosphere which is present in our air that gases are also present in soil soil volume which is not occupied by soil particle like pores spaces are filled by soil water and partly with the soil air you can see here in the diagram that soil contains small spaces small holes small pores inside it these pores are filled by two ways either by water or either by air if it is filled by water then it is soil water if it is filled by air it is soil air soil water and air are two basic components makes half of soil volume the remaining half of soil soil volume is the presence of the soil water and the soil air soil is lower in oxygen but higher in carbon dioxide as compared to atmospheric air Right. as compared to our atmospheric air which we use for breathing that air contain more oxygen but our soil contain less oxygen but as our air contain small amount of carbon dioxide but soil contain large amount of carbon dioxide so the process is slightly reversed all right the gases present in our air has different ratio or we can say opposite ratio as compared to the gases present in the soil if oxygen is of higher level we will say it is present in our atmosphere if oxygen is in lower level we can say it is present in our soil then because carbon dioxide is continuous process by microorganisms carbon dioxide is released during respiration during decomposition by these microorganisms continuously therefore the content of carbon dioxide in soil is higher as compared to oxygen soil air comes from external atmosphere contain nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide and water vapors all right the air basically consists of nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide and water vapors then soil aeration it plays an important role in the plant growth microbial population and microbial activities in this soil you can see here before aeration after aeration of loam 
and then after aeration we can see here lots of growth very good growth the best quality product is obtained when we prove when we provide our lawn our garden with aeration like mowing of lawn increases the grass production likewise if we do some aeration in the soil then it will increases the production of plant you can see here a better growth better roots better shoots due to this aeration all right we provide this space and then fill this space with water then also air also comes here and plant gathers required nutrition the soil level of carbon dioxide is 0.3% to 1% and in atmosphere the carbon dioxide ratio is very low that is 0.03% see 0.03% in our atmosphere and 0.3 to 1% in soil more carbon dioxide is present the reason is microorganisms are present in the soil continuously performing decomposition and releasing carbon dioxide then soil microbiology as we have discussed that soil have five major components i repeat it again in organic matter minerals organic matter soil water soil air soil microorganisms now what is soil microorganisms our basic and main discussion soil microorganisms soil is excellent culture media for growth of various microorganisms as the word indicate culture media media is the nutrition we provide and culture is that microorganisms which grow we have two different things we have a media or we can say we have a nutrition what is meant for this nutrition the culture culture mean microorganisms microorganism use this media for growth and what is that culture media we provide soil and soil used by microorganisms for their growth the channel of microorganism growth basically is soil soil considered dynamic or living system because it contain various group of microbes like bacteria algae fungi actinomycetes protozoa and viruses but bacteria are more numerous bacteria are present in more quantity more number all right these are some living systems some living creatures microscopic living creatures present inside the soil these microorganisms are less than 1% of total volume of soil and in upper portion of soil 10 to 30 cm depth the microbial population is very high and decreases when going in the depth the reason there is there are less nutrients there is less aeration there is less water there is less air and less microorganisms are present there inside deep inside the soil upper layer contain more microorganisms because it is more nourished with nutrients more nourished with water more nourished with salts minerals organic matter inorganic matter but the depth of the soil is not very aerated not contain more water not contain more soil so we can say large number of microorganisms are present on the upper surface of soil like 10 to 30 cm depth is the upper part of soil then living organisms in soil are divided into two main categories the first one is the soil flora and other one is the soil fauna flora means organisms living in specific place or environment bacteria fungi actinomycetes algae these are those organisms which are present in specific place all right soil fauna fauna means the group of animals in a particular region like organisms like protozoa nematode earthworms these are soil 
fauna. Percentage of various soil microorganisms, aerobic bacteria, seventy percent. As we know, percent mean hundred. Out of that hundred, seventy percent is aerobic bacteria, means those bacteria which required oxygen to grow. Thirty percent is anaerobic anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic those bacteria which are present in the soil and they do not require oxygen for their growth. Then actinomycetes is thirteen percent. Then fungi is three percent. And algae, virus, protozoa, they are present 0 0.2 to 0.8 percent. All right, 0 0.2 to 0.8 percent. Then importance of the soil microbiology means the importance of living organisms present in the soil. What is the main? What we can say that what is the main reason? What is the main use of these microorganisms for the soil? Why they are present in soil? Living organisms, plant and animal types are important components of soil. It plays a very important role in plant and animal ecosystem. The scope of soil microbiology can be understood by studying aspects like soil as living system. If we study soil, we can say it is a living system. If we study soil microbes and plant growth, we can say it is of great importance. Then soil microorganisms and soil structures are studied. Organic matter are decomposed. Then humus formation is done. What is humus? We can you you can see here plant soil fertilizer or rich soil. We can say rich soil by decaying matter. Humus is the rich soil by decaying matter. We can say as a fertilizer it is used. Then bio geochemical cycling of elements. Bio geochemical cycling of elements. Bio means living. Geo means earth. Chemicals mean simply the word chemical means chem components. Then cycling means regeneration again and again of elements. All right. Bio geochemicals. The, you can see here in the right side the study of connection between living organisms and chemical elements located in the soil. All right, bio means living. The interaction between the connection between the living bio means living and chemical mean chemicals. Then these living and chemical elements have a connection. They are present in the geo means earth. They are present in the earth. All right. The study of connection between living organisms and chemical elements in the soil. Then bio control agent. Microorganisms are used as a bio control agents. Means the agents used to control the pest. Pests are basically disease causing organisms such as insects, mites. Plants, disease-causing or harmful organisms. All right. Then soil microbes and seed germination and biological nitrogen fixation. You can see here nitrogen fixation is a process by which molecular nitrogen, means N2, is present in the air is converted into NH3, means ammonia. N2 present in the air is converted into NH3. Atmospheric nitrogen is a molecular dinitrogen, a relatively non-reactive molecule that is metabolically useless to all but few microorganisms. All right, this atmospheric nitrogen is of no use, so it is converted by nitrogen fixation using nitrogen fixation bacteria into ammonia. And ammonia is ammonia is a very important fertilizer needed by the soil for better plant growth. All right. Then hope you have studied very clearly about microbiology of soil. Moving towards the air, microbiology of air, or we can say air microbiology. 
first of all we will discuss that why we study air and how we measure the quality of air all right air is present everywhere how we can differentiate that which air is good which air is bad which air is polluted which air is not polluted all right then that heading is air quality world health organization define air pollution is a situation which are harmful to people or health air pollution is any condition any situation which is very dangerous to the people or very dangerous to people health if air contain microorganisms if air is not clean if air contain many antigens allergens then it is not a good quality air it is a polluted air we need to clean this air the term air quality defined by british columbia university as the state of air around us is called air quality the state of air around us is air quality good air quality refers to clean clear and unpolluted air if air is clean if air is clear if air is unpolluted it is a air of good quality clean air is essential to maintaining the delicate balance of life in the planet to maintain a delicate to maintain a sensitive balance of life on the planet we need to have a clean air to inhale to respire all right then environment related law in pakistan is present and according to that pakistan environmental protection act 1997 which states that an act to provide for protection conservation rehabilitation and improvement of the environment doing four things protection to protect conservation to store to reserve rehabilitation means restore restore improvement making better and which thing is used to make all these four factors possible our environment it means we have to protect our environment we have to conserve our environment we have to rehabilitate our environment we have to improve our environment why for the prevention and control of pollution we had to control and we had to prevent our environment from pollution and this thing will promote the sustained development all right when we have these four factors under our control then pollution will be controlled and when pollution is controlled then we are promoting a sustained a developed environment which is basically a best need for a best life all right four factors i repeat again protection conservation rehabilitation and improvement of environment why these four factors are performed for the prevention and control of population pollution and why it is controlled because it will promote a sustained development moving towards the other point in india air act 1981 ambient air pollution considered is in illig in legal sense for punishment if we do not have a good air to breathe then indian act said said that the person will be responsible for punishment then assessment of microorganisms in air how we will assess that microorganisms are present in air we cannot see them we cannot get the air in a closed container very easily then we will we will have different methods we will have a media we will have a channel through which we collect the air and then trapped those microorganisms which are present in that 
bad air or maybe good air and these methods are basically the first one is the impingements in liquid impingement means to penetrate to be collected to be accumulated in liquids how it is performed in this method the air is drawn by capillary tube through the liquid in the form of bubble we will have a we will have a jar filled with liquid we will have also a capillary tube what we will do is we will have that capillary tube filled with liquid and then we will have a bubble in that capillary tube again liquid is sucked now there is a single capillary tube having a we can say having a space in that tube inside the liquid the organism get trapped into the liquid liquid are covered with medium to determine its microbial content living cells can be enumerated in this method all right living cells can be enumerated enumerated means we can find out the number of the cells then the second is impingement on solids microorganisms collected or impinged directly on the solid surface of agar medium by gravitational force we use a nutrient we use a nutrition medium which is agar we made a solid agar and then place it for microorganisms to be impinged directly on that medium then colonies develops on the surface medium after a few days of incubation incubation means to place a thing at certain temperature which is favorable for the growth then we will incubate that colony for few days cover the petri dish containing the agar medium is removed and agar surface is exposed to air sample then we will expose that petri dish to the air sample then colonies develop and techniques does not record actual volume but we can have an estimate of that number it gives the kind and number of organisms in a particular area we will place that agar plate in different areas maybe we place that in lawn in in a laboratory in a kitchen or different different places are used for that colony development and every type of air is exposed with different type of microorganisms we can easily see that in that petri dish and then test them to check the kind of microorganism very simple process two types on liquid and on solids in liquid we use a capillary tube filled with liquid and having a air bubble and in solids we directly prepare a solid agar media incubate that media for certain time and then open that media expose it to different type of air samples and then record the number of colonies and type of colonies what could be the basic source of contamination of our air how our air get of bad quality how our air get bad contaminated the first source is automobile source which thing is important obviously the fuel combustion the burning of fuel releasing smoke the basic reason for our atmosphere to be polluted second one is the agriculture source that is the spray of pesticides pesticides are sprayed and the air is gets polluted industries tanning is performed can raise done that is very very contaminated for our air nuclear power plants and chemical industries all these are the major source for contaminating our air then all these are the basic air pollutants which are contaminating our air you can see here in the diagram an industrial area where industry is working and releasing smoke in the atmosphere also releasing some waste into the water so we can say that 
various gases are present various chemicals are present in our air which are contaminating our air quality all right the other one is the measurement of air quality a very interesting point how we measure the air quality how we measure that the air is good in quality or bad in quality we are inhaling the air but we cannot say that it's of good quality all right we can say that if we have fever then we can touch our head and say that yes we have a high temperature but we cannot say that either it is 98 either it is 99 either it is 100 or whatever it is then what we do we use a thermometer that thermometer will measure that temperature either it is 101 100 or whatever like that point the air quality is measured by using some instrument and that instrument give us the value give us the value in number that's that number shows that the air quality is good or bad that measuring point is air quality index air quality index air quality index are used to measure air quality the value of air quality index is 0 to 100 0 to 300 Higher the value of air quality index, the greater the level of air pollution, and greater will be the concern toward health. Obviously, if we have a bad air to inhale, then our health is at the risk. So, when AQI value is high, we will say that the air is very much polluted, and our health is at the risk. For example, an AQI value of fifty or below. represents good air quality all right while an aqi value over 300 represents hazardous air quality dangerous air quality all right clear the value is 0 to 300 at 50 or below 50 it is of good quality above that value above 50 it will be of somewhat polluted and moving towards 300 or more than 300 it is very much dangerous for our health it is very much dangerous for our health you can see here in the diagram a basic cycle the scientific research shows that air quality quality management cycle is done globally as we can say that undertake ongoing evaluation implement different programs develop control strategies determine emission reduction and establish goals you can see here a good quality lung good quality respiratory tract the basic purpose to inhale the good quality air we can have that good quality of our respiratory system if we have determine the emission reductions yeah, that how we can reduce the emission of gases in air from industries how we can develop control strategies how we can develop implement programs which provide us with good good air then how undertake ongoing evaluation and then the result will be the type of goal we want moving towards our main point microbiology of water the water microbiology is concerned with microorganisms which type of microorganisms that live in water and can be transported from one habit to another by water types of water there are two types of water ground water and surface water ground water it originates from deep wells and subterranean springs free from bacteria free from bacteria deep water 
deep sand and rocks are present and these sands and rocks basically filter these microorganisms and our ground water will be free from this bacteria contaminated when flows from channels and this ground water being contaminated only when it flows through different channels all right then surface water the water present on the upper surface of stream lakes shallow water is contaminated air contaminates the rain water agricultural products industry waste and sewage bacteria lie in human intestinal tract like e coli escherichia coli salmonella shigella salmonella and vibrio contaminate water these are various types of microorganisms which are present in our intestinal tract and cause diseases intestinal virus of animal that contaminate water by causing disease diarrhea we have a severe that person may have that living may have a severe dehydration water is also transport media for microorganisms by surface and parts of ships in oceans during their journey around the globe one of the microorganism is vibrio cholera causing life threatening diarrhea in human in humans vibrio cholera is the main type of microorganism main type of bacteria we can say which causes a life threatening condition it is transported through different type of areas via ships in the oceans then fresh water microbiology it is base as we have discussed that the water it have different types like upper water middle water deep water we have classified it into different zones we can easily call them as zones of water the first one is littoral zone the other one is limnetic zone then last one is benthic zone variety of microorganisms lives in fresh water the region of water body near the shoreline is well lightened shallow warmer than other regions photosynthetic algae and bacteria that uses light as energy source thrive in this zone all right the area near shoreline is very well lighted only because of the presence of sunlight and sunlight is very important for growth all right it also warmer the environment which allow the microorganisms to grow and two microorganisms are here written here photosynthetic algae and bacteria they grow in this zone the other zone is limnetic zone away from shoreline away from shoreline as the water deepens temperature become colder because there is less light there is less sunlight there is less oxygen due to which water cooler purple and green sulfur and aerobic bacteria are dominant in this zone purple and green sulfur and aerobic bacteria are dominant photosynthetic bacteria are somewhat present anaerobic are not then photosynthetic are mainly present benthic so the bottom of fresh water of ocean where few microorganisms survive because there is less oxygen or we can say there is very very minute oxygen bacteria live without oxygen and sunlight like methane producing bacteria only thrive only survive in this zone all right methane producing bacteria there is no light therefore other anaerobic bacteria cannot grow only methane producing bacteria survive in benthic zone you can see here littoral zone there are various micro living creatures there are various 
plants growing in this region then we have limnatic zone the second one you can see here some light is present fishes you can see here and in surviving here and in benthic zone nothing is present no oxygen no light nothing is present and no microorganism no plant is grown here in soil water microbiology salt loving bacteria called halophiles bacteria are present in the salt water the name of that halophile bacteria is archaebacteria the most dominant species in the ocean is archaebacteria microbial flora of water is water support the growth of beneficial bacteria for example certain yeast provide us with beer and bread similarly some bacteria grow in contaminated water help in digesting the poison from the water disease causing microbes in water are life threatening that was the beneficial and this point is for disease causing microbes like bacteria and virus live in intestine of human and animal found in feces can contaminate water and can be fatal for drinking all right can be fatal for drinking then there are various names like e coli salmonella shigella vibrio cholera rotavirus all these are the types which are present in the water then microbes like protozoa named as cryptosporidium in drinking water may cause prolonged diarrhea and fatal for impaired immune system our immune system will be impaired will be lost if we have these microorganisms in our water many microbes like bacteria protozoa algae fungi tiny animals are present in food for example cyanobacteria they convert sunlight into energy useful for water life algae is also used it also uses as a food for other life of water all right basically the main main we have main concepts about these microorganisms microorganisms that lives in fresh water are variety of microorganisms lives in fresh water the region of water body near shoreline is well lighted warmer so photosynthetic algae grows there that use they uses light energy and live in this zone going away from limnatic zone there is littoral zone going away from littoral zone there is another zone named as limnatic zone all right photosynthetic microbes lives there but with deepen the water light temperature and oxygen decreases so microorganisms require oxygen do not survive in this zone in the bottom of fresh water benthic zone few microbes survive because of the absence of sunlight and oxygen and very low temperature then microorganisms that live in salt water see in the diagram that is red tide completely filled with microorganisms salt water presents different environment to microbes higher the concentration of salt higher the value of ph lower nutrient lower the value of nutrition relative to fresh water and this condition is very lethal very dangerous to the life but halophiles bacteria salt loving bacteria and other microorganisms like vibrio cholera and pseudomonas they are living there archaea bacteria is one of the dominant form of life in this zone then the other type is the dinoflagellates the type of algae found in salt water dinoflagellates the rapid growth and multiplication of dinoflagellates turn the water red this red tide depletes the nutrition and oxygen of water and causes many fishes to die all right the color of water turns red due to the presence of dinoflagellates 
and the growth increases color turns to red nutrition depleted oxygen of water is depleted and fishes die then we can say water is a transport of microorganisms water is an ideal mode of transportation for microorganisms for example water in the body of ships to stabilize the vessel or tank during voyage in no is to be the main mode of transportation around the world around the globe as you can see in oceans different ships are moving from one country to other country and that ships contain different parts where water comes inside and take with taken with the microorganisms from one country to other country and then the main disease transported by this process is vibrio cholera the microorganism is vibroid comma shaped bacteria that is causing diarrhea in the human body then bacteria killing treatment drinking water is usually treated to minimize the risk of microbial contamination chlorine and chlorine derivatives are used to kill the bacteria like e coli in water gases and radiations are also used to kill the microorganisms in the drinking water for example ozone gas uv rays and microbes also physically excluded from the water by filters we can make water drinkable using all these methods water quality testing an important aspect of microbiology for drinking water is the testing of water to ensure that it is safe to drink turbidity test is performed in this test the turbidity of water gives an indication to the amount of suspended particles inside the water in this test when light is passed through the um, through the angle of 90 degree from the water the naphthalometer is used the device name is nephlometric turbidity unit nephlometric nephlometric turbidity unit instrument used to measure the turbidity it measures the intensity of light scattered at the angle of 90 degree so if the water quality is deteriorating or damaging action is done in that water then action should be taken all right we will have a brief discussion about this whole topic in which we have studied about the microbiology of soil we'll define that different microorganisms present in soil different microorganisms present in water different microorganisms present in air then we have components of soil which is admixture of five components we define them one by one explain them one by one as organic matter inorganic matter soil water soil air and soil microorganisms then different living organisms present we call them soil flora and soil fauna in soil flora and fauna different organisms are named like bacteria fungi algae actinomycetes protozoa nematodes then we have different percentages we have 70% for aerobic bacteria we have 30% for anaerobic bacteria 13% we have it for actinomycetes then point to 2.8 percent for protozoa viruses or algae then we have some important points or scope of soil microbiology that why we are discussing about soil microbiology why it is important we have different points like soil is a living system soil in soil microbes and plant growth are studied different organic matter are decomposed humus formation is done biogeochemical action is performed biological control is done then soil germination soil microbes and seed germination is done using nitrogen fixation fixing bacteria nitrogen cycle is performed which convert atmospheric nitrogen into a important fertilizer of ammonia then we have air microbiology in which we discussed how we measure the quality of air what is air quality how it is measured how different acts of different countries shows that environmental protection is done 
Two methods are performed to assess the quality of air as impingement in liquids and impingement in solids. Then we have different sources, different basic points which are helpful in increasing the pollution in the air. Then different air pollutants are discussed. Then we have measured the air quality by using air quality index. Having a value of 0 to 300, above 300 it is very very dangerous. Then air quality management is done that we reduce the emission from different factories, we reduce different gases released in the air, then develop control strategies, then develop implement different programs to awake the people to control the air quality. Then we have a third topic that was the microbiology of water, water we drink, water we use for different purpose that should be of a good quality. Two types of basic types of water are present, ground water, surface water. Ground water present deeper inside like in wells, in springs, that is very clear water. We commonly use these terms that water from wells is very clear very clear very good quality the reason the filtration is performed and that filtration that cleaning up of water is done to different rocks different sand particles then surface water and contamination is done in that water is through agricultural products through rain water through sewage through industrial waste different microorganisms are present which are causing diseases then water is an important transport media. Then freshwater microbiology is studied, divided into three groups, littoral zone, limnatic zone, benthic zone. The first zone is very well lighted. You can see here in diagram, more oxygen, more light is present, more nutrition is present. Plants are growing there side by side, but going towards slightly deeper, you can see no very less plants are growing there and in the last zone benthic zone there is no plant growth no living system is present soil water microbiology then microbial flora is discussed in which different microorganisms are present like yeast and yeast is used in making beer and bread then different bacteria are used, different viruses are present and these are causing various diseases in humans and drinking water mainly cause diarrhea in humans. Then different microorganisms named Giardia and Kystosporodium they are present. Then cyanobacteria also present which convert sunlight into energy useful for water life. Algae is also used as a food by other, li other living systems in the water. Then microorganisms present in the fresh water. We have studied three zones, littoral, limnatic and benthic zone. And all these zones contain different types of microorganisms like photosynthetic algae is present in littoral zone. Then those anaerobic bacteria which do not require oxygen for growth are present here. Then in the bottom of fresh water, in the deep inside the water, very few microorganisms are present and we said that only methane producing bacteria are present there which grows in the absence of sunlight and in the absence of oxygen. And temperature is very low. In the littoral zone temperature is very high, warmer environment favorable for the growth of microorganisms. And then going slightly deeper temperature becomes low and that is less favorable for the plants, less favorable for the animals, microorganisms to grow. Then microorganisms living in salt water. We said that more the concentration of salt, more will be the pH. And that increased pH is not favorable for microorganisms growth. And in that zone only salt loving bacteria are present. We can say Archaebacteria are dominant species in that place. In the diagram you can see red color of water. That red color is due to the presence of dinoflagellates which is a type of algae. And this 
dinoflagellate is only present in salt salt water salt like spaces and this dinoflagellate multiplication turns the water red then we name it as red tide this red tide depletes lessen the amount of nutrients and oxygen of water due to which fishes dies up then water as a transport system we said that ideal mode of transportation for microorganism is water as excellent as we have said that soil is a main source for growth of microorganism we can say that transport of microorganism is basically done by water for example water in the body of ships to stabilize the vessel during voyages is known to be a main mode of nut transportation of microorganism around the globe around the world and the main example is vibrio cholera coma shape bacteria then water is cleaned by bacteria killing treatments drinking water is made pure by using different gases different chemicals and then water quality testing is done in which turbidity test is performed and hence the sample is passed with the light at angle of 90 degree and that light scattering at 90 degree shows that the water is not of good quality water is not of good quality which means that we need to clear to clean up the water all right that's it for now thank you allah hafiz